I gotta say, I'm still really impressed by that animatronic Robin. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today, I'm gonna be talking about Disney's 1964 fantasy musical, Mary Poppins. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Mary Poppins stars Julie Andrews, Dick Van Dyke, and David Tomlinson, and was directed by Robert Stevenson. Based on the Mary Poppins book series by P.L. Travers, it tells the story of the mysterious and magical Mary Poppins, played by Julie Andrews, who's hired by the stern banker George Banks to be the nanny for his two children. I've always thought of Mary Poppins as one of those gold standard Disney live action classics, and I've always really loved the film. Or so I thought. I realize now that it's actually more the idea of Mary Poppins that I love. The snippets of song and character memories from my childhood are what I cherish, and not the film in its entirety. Up until maybe five years ago, I hadn't rewatched the movie since I was a kid, which kind of surprised me, because again, I've always had this very positive association with the movie. Usually, that means very frequent rewatches for me, but for some reason, I didn't revisit this for nearly two decades, and so all my feelings were based on those childhood memories. And it's those snippets of memories that keep this film magical for me. Mary Poppins as a character was, and still is, amazing. Her unique mix of positivity, practicality, and wit was something that appealed to me even as a young kid. And rewatching now as an adult, I think I like her even more. There's just something so funny and likable about the way she interacts with everybody. Julie Andrews did a fantastic job and was really able to pull off the tough blend of biting sarcasm and incredible kindness. Dick Van Dyke as Bert was always another high point of this film for me. His creativity and helpfulness were always admirable, and I could never believe just how much of those legs were kicking and leaping around. Seriously, they never stop moving. I get tired just watching them in this movie. And I can't talk about Mary Poppins without mentioning the music. This movie contains so many iconic songs that cause such a rush of nostalgia for me, so I can only imagine how it is for people who grew up loving the movie. Chim Chim Cheree has always been my favorite song in the movie, and that whole chimney sweep sequence on the roof used to be my favorite part of the film. It was exciting to watch, and honestly used to scare me just a bit when I was younger. Not enough to actually be afraid, but the combination of the slightly eerie music and all the silhouettes was enough to put me on edge in an excited sort of way. But this movie is chock full of memorable songs. A Spoonful of Sugar used to be my other favorite, and that whole nursery cleanup scene used to amaze me as a kid. Even now, I'm still pretty impressed by it. If you had asked me to name the Mary Poppins songs five years ago, probably the only other one I would have come up with was Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. But when actually re-watching the movie, it was amazing how many of the more minor songs triggered nostalgia and sudden memories for me. Jolly Holiday, Sister Suffragette, Step in Time, and especially the hauntingly downbeat Feed the Birds. But for all those memorable things in this movie, there are other parts that I had all but forgotten. At almost two and a half hours, this is a surprisingly long movie, and with its pacing issues, you definitely start to feel the length. I don't think I really noticed it too much as a kid, because I was so focused on the music and the fun scenes with Mary or Bert, but there's a lot of this movie that kind of feels like unnecessary filler. Watching it now as an adult, I can see that the story is actually about making time for family and not taking things for granted, but those family scenes, and especially the bank scenes, really mess with the pace and magic of the film. Even some of the scenes with Mary and Bert feel like they drag on far too long. I may be alone in this opinion, but I wish the chalk drawing animated portion was half the length it is. It's a really fun and awe-inspiring sequence at first, but it just doesn't end. The penguin scene drags on especially long, and although amusing, the horse riding portion could have used some trimming too. And don't even get me started about the Uncle Albert scene. 
Despite all my complaints, the nostalgia and memory snippets I have still win me over. This is just one of those feel-good movies that works on multiple levels. It has these really whimsical fantasy elements that perfectly evoke childlike imagination, but it's also got a surprising degree of maturity when it comes to the actual thematic backbone of the story. So I think it really appeals to both kids and adults. Although it'll never join the ranks of my top favorite Disney films, Mary Poppins, or at least the idea of Mary Poppins, will always have a spot in my heart. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The first pro is gonna sound really obvious, but Mary Poppins. She is just such a great character. I've never read any of the Mary Poppins books, so I don't know how much of the characterization in the movie is thanks to those books, but she has got some interesting layers. She's got this incredibly dry humor and sarcastic wit that's just endlessly enjoyable for me. And she's also very enigmatic. We only see her in this very specific nanny context, and nothing about her really gets an explanation. That's part of the movie's charm, but I can't help but be intrigued anytime little hints of her backstory are weaved in when she's talking to Bert. Pro number two is another obvious one. The music. This is a musical, so good music is a bit of an expectation here, but it's really good. There are a few dud songs, but for the most part, this soundtrack is absolutely stacked. Obviously, I wasn't around when this movie came out, so I don't know if these songs were instant classics or have developed into classics over the decades, but this is some top-tier Disney music. Chim Chim Cheree and A Spoonful of Sugar have always been my clear favorites, but this movie is just loaded with catchy and extremely memorable songs. On the con side, the biggest issue is definitely the pacing. The movie has these really entertaining and fun sequences with Mary and the kids, but they're mostly episodic and surprisingly kind of tangential to the core of the story. So to really hit on the thematic family elements of this movie, we end up getting a lot of scenes not involving Mary Poppins. Some of these are irreverent and fun, but a lot of them really slow things down too much. Pretty much anything with the bank is a slog to get through, and honestly, even some of the scenes with Mary Poppins drag on for longer than they should. The second con stems from the first, and it's that this movie is way too long. Now, I have nothing against long movies. If a film is well-paced and uses its time to give us meaningful character moments and story points, then I don't really care how long it is. But Mary Poppins is not that type of movie. It does have a story, but it's more of a series of fun musical numbers linked by a simple plot thread than it is a traditional narrative film. That style works really well here, up to a point. An hour and a half, maybe two hours could have worked, but nearly two and a half hours is just too much. A lot of the scenes that mess with the pace could have easily been cut out without affecting the story, and a number of the musical sequences could have and should have been reduced some, especially the 20 minute long hybrid animation sequence in the middle of the movie. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Mary Poppins or any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Mary Poppins three and a half out of five paws. Even putting nostalgia aside, this movie has cut some great songs and a lot of fun fantasy sequences. Plus, it's great title character. The pacing and length just drag it down a bit. I would recommend Mary Poppins to just about anybody. If you're a fan of musicals, fantasy, or Disney, then you really can't go wrong with this one. And even if that's not usually your favorite thing, I think this movie will have enough to it that you'll still be able to enjoy it. You might not love it, and you might never consider it a classic, but you'll probably appreciate it. If you liked Mary Poppins, I would recommend the extremely delayed sequel, Mary Poppins Returns. I know it's really easy to scoff at the idea of a Disney sequel, especially one released 54 years after the original, but it's actually pretty good. It is officially a sequel, but it largely reimagines elements of the story, so if you like this original, you'll probably really like the sequel too. If you want another fantasy musical, you should definitely check out Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's another multi-layered story that features imaginative fun sequences and memorable songs, but also has darker, more mature themes. And if you're interested in the Mary Poppins world, you might want to watch Saving Mr. Banks. It's a biopic about the inspiration for Mary Poppins and the process that Walt Disney went through in order to get the books made into a movie. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. 
Number one, have you seen Mary Poppins? If so, what'd you think? And number two, what's your favorite movie that features a nanny? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.